Hello, Barry Winbolt here with another episode of Get a Better Handle on Life. I've been thinking about communication and in particular the receiving part of communication, the way that people listen or don't to us. I was talking to somebody recently about this problem of getting somebody else to listen and they used that well-worn phrase of they just weren't listening to me and it got me thinking about who's responsible for the message. I mean why should somebody listen to us if they're not interested or engaged or if our message doesn't suit them, if it's not convenient to them. Like it or not, at work or anywhere else, you'll be judged on your communication skills. Effective communication is important because it influences not only how others perceive you, but also how much they like, respect and trust you. Being a good communicator is high on the list of what all employers want in their employees, so it affects not only your career prospects, but also whether you can get a job in the first place. You may have thought of communication as only broadcasting or sharing information, and I mean broadcasting in the sense of putting out information, speaking, not necessarily the media. But receiving information is just as important. Empathising with others, reading their non-verbal language or their, their non-verbal cues, as well as their spoken message. And also listening to the message behind the message. What does the way they're delivering it, it tell you about them? I mean, are they hesitant? Are they excited? Are they sad? Very often people give out conflicting messages, don't they? They'll say something positive, supposedly, with a very negative tone of voice like, yeah, I really like it, or yeah, I'm having a great time. And you don't know whether that's irony or whether they are trying to convince you they're having a great time. So the point I'm making is that communication is a question of layer upon layer of different aspects. Now, later in this podcast, I'm going to give you some information which I don't think you'll find anywhere else. Uh, I've put it together over the years, but to me, it's one of the most fundamental parts of communicating well with other people and having them listen to you and understand you. So I'll come to that later in this episode. So as I was saying, you may have thought of communication as only putting out information, but there's a lot more to it than that. And it's as important to take in and read information as it is to talk about yourself. In fact, it has been said, because I've said it many, many times, I'm sure it's been said elsewhere, that actually listening is the first rule of communication, not pumping out information. Because when you understand what your audience is saying, whether it's one person or the great public, if you happen to be a media person or a, a politician or a salesperson, whatever it happens to be, when you understand what their voice is saying and what their words are saying and what their needs and wishes are, then you can tailor your message so that it hits the spot with them. So actually, listening is the most fundamental skill to improving your communication skills overall. Because have you noticed people listen to others who listen to them? So if you start by listening, you're already already getting ahead in the game, listening and asking questions. I'm going to tell you about some key communication skills in this brief episode. You may have thought of communication as only putting out information, as I keep saying, but being an effective communicator starts within oneself, which requires self-awareness, the ability to accurately and honestly assess your competencies and willingness to strengthen any areas where you fall short. It's a rather humbling process, actually, if you're learning to be a good communicator. We fight so hard to be heard in modern life, and that leads us to raise our voice, to speak more stridently, to try and speak over other people. I'm talking generally, of course, I'm sure you don't do that, but I certainly do. And whether it's training my dog or speaking in my family, and there's no similarity there, of course, in my communications, except that the dog is part of the family, 
whatever I'm doing, if I'm not getting what I want from that communication, I tend to raise my voice a little or to put an edge to my turn or to be more emphatic, which of course is the wrong way to go about it. So it's a constant process. I'm always trying to remind myself of that and keep on top of that and listen first and listen better and understand other people. But I'm a human being and I'm fallible and I can't be right all the time and I can't be perfect. I can only strive to do my best. So we all get frustrated when we are not heard, when we're not listened to, and we tend to up the message. We amplify it, we make it sound louder, we tend to become more forceful, more emphatic. Now I promised you a little tip earlier in this session and here's the point I want to make. that. If you want to be understood, if you want people to listen to you, you have to speak their language. And that doesn't mean that you actually have to speak German or French or Greek. But think about it this way. You have to speak a language which they will understand and which they are prepared to listen to. And that's based on your relationship with them. Now about that question of language. Imagine I'm sitting here communicating in English. It's my mother tongue. I can also do it more or less in one or two other languages. But if I speak, for example, French or Spanish or German, which would be even more painful because I don't speak German. And if I attempt that and try and communicate with you, a listener who's expecting a message in English, and you suddenly get garbled language that you don't understand, this communication is not going to work. So whose fault is that? Can I say you're not listening if I give you a message which just isn't clear or intelligible to you? No, I can't. My responsibility is to tailor my message so that you can hear it and you can understand it. Now here's a thought. The next time you hear yourself saying they just weren't listening of somebody else and blaming them for your failed communication, consider that actually it is your responsibility to get the communication right. You have to speak so that they can understand you, so that they want to listen to you and so that they're prepared and accepting of your message, prepared for and accepting your message. So it's no good using somebody not listening as an excuse for your failed communication. You are responsible for your communication, you get the message right and people will listen. If they're not listening, Sorry, it's back to you. So that was a, an important learning point for me many, many years ago when I started looking at language as part of my developmental process around being a therapist, psychologist and lecturer on communications and conflict. So I have found that extremely useful. If your communication isn't working, come back to yourself and think, OK, what do I need to do to help this other person receive my message? It's no good trying to force them to hear you if they can't or won't. I said there would be nine communication skills you could think about in evaluating yourself or evaluating your own listening skills. So here goes. So number one is how well do you listen? And how do you appear as a listener? So when you're sitting in conversation with somebody else, whether it's a social conversation or a more formal event, how do you look? How do you sound? Do you appear receptive and attentive? First thing. Number two, as a communicator, you should look confident even when you don't feel it. Now, you just watch other people communicating for a time. I went into a, a business yesterday where I was inquiring about a service. And when the man told me about it, he seemed to be fidgeting with, fidgeting with his nose and covering his mouth quite a lot. Now, it looked like a pensive gesture. But what's that saying about the person? It didn't instill confidence in me. Apart from anything else, I couldn't hear him properly because he was mumbling behind his hand. But it doesn't show great confidence. So inspect your body language when you are communicating and be, be as a listener and as a speaker. Appear confident. Fake it till you make it. Do the window dressing, as I often say. Third, composure. Do you appear interested? present and proactive 
why should people listen to you if you're not present with them in the conversation and if you're not able to engage proactively in the conversation and that includes the types of questions you ask by the way questions are a whole other subject but it's really useful i do have a podcast episode on on the importance of powerful questions by the way so questions polish up your questioning skills do a bit of reading listen to my podcast check my blog at www.barrywimbolt.com you'll find loads there so that's composure that's number three number four empathy do you put others at their ease? Are you at ease yourself? Now we're all picking up signals from our interlocutors, as they called our interlocutors, the person we speak to. We're all picking up signals. We're exchanging nonverbal messages all the time. So do you genuinely empathize? Can you listen to the person so that you hear them from their point of view? Number five, I think that's where we are. Number five, first one was how well do you listen? Then confidence two, composure three, empathy four. Number five, do you appear approachable so that others will want to talk to you? Again, this is a body language thing, an eye contact thing, sitting with an open posture, looking welcoming and respectful. If you're sitting scrunched up in the corner with your arms folded and looking away from them, or if you're constantly looking over their shoulder, thinking about where you're going to get lunch while you're listening to them, then you don't look very attentive and they probably won't feel like they want to engage with you. Number six, friendliness. Are you easy to talk to? Now, this may be a difficult thing to judge, but just look around, ask a few friends. We can all do these five things prior to this sixth one that I've just mentioned, and it will make you appear more friendly and approachable, more open. You don't actually have to like the person, but you do have to appear approachable. Number seven, nonverbal communication. I've already touched on that. Do you appear nervous, under stress, preoccupied or uncomfortable? Don't need to say any more about that. Number eight, do you have a respectful demeanour? It's amazing that so many people are so caught up so much of the time in putting out their message and they can appear disrespectful and as if, as if they're not listening properly. So do you respect the other person? Do you respect their right to hold their opinion even if you disagree with them? Do you respect them as a human being? Once again, doesn't mean you have to like them, but examine your own attitudes to other people and to the other person you're speaking to, because all of these will influence how open and receptive they are to your ideas. And when you're responding, clear and concise responses. Now, I've noticed in myself years ago when I started public speaking that when I wasn't very sure of myself, I overcompensated by giving the overly lengthy uh, explanations for things. I would kind of explain something, then I'd explain it again a different way and a different way and a different way. And I could go on for 10 or 20 minutes like that, just expounding on one point. And I'm not sure if expounding was the right word there. But anyway, expanding on one point. So consider that you give affirmative responses, you make eye contact, you acknowledge, you don't have to give your opinion the whole way through if you're listening to somebody else. And then find out what it is they've said when you've got the whole message, give them a quick summary to show that you've understood. And then that's a whole other story, how you uh, develop your listening skills, summarize feedback and that type of thing. Now, taking an honest view at how you communicate and resolving to work on being good, as good as you can, will quickly bring benefits for you. This journey of self-awareness may not be a very easy or comfortable one, but if you really want to be an effective communicator, you have to do it. Just look around you at people who communicate well. And that doesn't mean people who have a PR team behind them, people in the media and so forth, who are spouting prepared statements or who've been schooled in looking good on camera. This is about you authentically communicating your point and being approachable so that other people will engage with you. If in doubt, ask around, choose people you trust to give you a fair and honest assessment or some feedback. Don't just ask your best friend, by the way, because they're usually a bit biased. And remember that modesty, humility are not only endearing qualities, they're also hallmarks of a leader.
Importantly, your communication skills are constantly on show and constantly being assessed, whether you like it or not. So honing them, polishing up your skills should be a top priority. And it's not just about business people. It's not just about media people. It's about anybody who wants to get along well in life at any level, any level of ability, any level of uh, communication with other people. If you make your communications effective, you will make your life easier and more satisfying. Being a confident communicator doesn't mean being pushy, brash or outspoken. The best communicators listen more than they speak, ask questions rather than giving opinions, observe rather than imposing or asserting prematurely and praise others rather than promoting themselves. Now, those are the hallmarks of effective communication that you see in people who communicate well. Confidence and presence of mind act like this. It can take time to cultivate these inner qualities, so practice and persevere. Now, I hope that's useful. If you found this useful or enjoyable, or both preferably, please subscribe, follow me either on Instagram, at my blog, for my newsletter on YouTube. You'll find me on all of those platforms. I've put the links in the uh, notes about this episode. And uh, well, over to you and may your communications be blessed and the rays of good fortune smile upon you. So over to you, all the best. This is me, Barry Wimbolt, saying goodbye for now and speak to you again soon.